Good morning and welcome to a new edition of Merrill's Monday Morning Market Madness. Um, coming at you today with some update regarding what we are seeing most recently in the Phoenix residential housing market. Um, kind of just talking about trends and uh, something quite interesting that is happening um, with our market trends this year that we haven't seen happen over the last couple of years um, that could be cause for concern for potential home sellers. So I'll get into that in a minute, but let me start with some of the numbers that I always like to begin with. How many active listings do we have on the market right now? We're sitting at 16,225 active listings. Um, that's as of you know a few minutes ago when I pulled the numbers right before creating this recording. Um, and to give that some perspective, at this exact date time last year, we were at 14,969. That's interesting because we were expecting a decline in inventory, being in the number of homes available for sale, um, and it's actually rising uh, moderately, Not, nothing you know uh, to panic about per se, but we are seeing more homes available for sale right now. Um, there are a total of 8,433 listings that are under contract or pending. And then we have 5,665 that have closed in the past 30 days. <clears throat> now I use those numbers to calculate a, a pretty basic metric. It says MSI up here, that stands for month's supply of inventory um, at 2.93, meaning all we're really doing is we're taking the total number of active listings divided by the number of listings that sold in the past 30 days. The theoretical is you know, sort of an index that lets us measure if no new homes were gonna come on the market, how long would it take before absolutely everything that is on the market right now to be gone, assuming that homes continue to sell at their current pace? Um, typically, we have said that a, a month's supply of inventory of four is a balanced market, three or less is a buyer's market, and five or more is a seller's market. Um, so, you know, the numbers are still leaning towards seller's market right now, um, but you know it's it depends on the area that's the entire phoenix metro area um you know different different sub markets are doing different things and and buyers right now certainly do have probably more leverage and negotiating room than they have had you know recently especially with inventory climbing next i wanted to dive into how did february now that you know we're today's march 4th so we're a couple of days and i have the final numbers um for february I want to kind of share with you what happened in February this year, but how does that compare to February's of previous years? So we had a total of 5,726 closings in February of 2024, almost identical to the number of closings we had in February of 2023. Sorry, I see there's a bit of a glare on my whiteboard there. I don't know what to do about that. But, uh, but, but anyway, yeah, we've got almost an identical number of homes that closed over, um, you know, February of 23 compared to February of 24. Check out the average price, though. In February of 23, the average sales price was only 524000 Well, I don't want to say only. That's still a lot of money. Um, but then uh, in February of 2024... 500 and almost $80,000. So a very significant, if you do the math on that, that's a 10.6% increase in the average sales price year over year. But it's a little misleading, okay? If you go back to February of 2022, 7,993 homes sold. Now, rates had just started coming up and they really hadn't gone crazy at this point yet. So rates were still really good. We were still seeing a ton of activity, ton of home sales. Um, and so uh, so that's you know one of the reasons why a significant more number of homes sold at that date. But check out the average sales price at 562,000. So basically what we really had was in 2022, it was 562, then it came down to 524, and then it came back up to 580. All right. So if you did the math on uh, you know what it has done since February of 22 to February of 24, it's a, a total of a 3.2 percent increase, meaning that over the past two years, they've only averaged 1.6 percent increase in home values per year on average. Right. Um, the sales this next these percentage numbers is a, um, a sales to list price ratio. How close was the sales price in comparison to what the seller was asking for the home? This metric can be a little bit misleading because many times sellers did have to reduce their price off of the original price. This isn't the original uh, sales price to list price ratio. This is just the sales price, the list price to the sales price, the list price that it was at the time that it went under contract. 
So this year we're at 98%. Last year was at 97%, so pretty similar. And then of course in 2022, it was actually at 101% homes were selling above the asking price. And then we've got um, days on market this year at 66 days. Last year was at 78 days. 2022 was at only 34 days. So, um, so obviously the markets, everyone knows the market's not anywhere near as hot as it was in 2022. Um, but, you know, even compared to 2023, a lot of those metrics are implying the market's a little bit hotter now than it was um, February last year. We are seeing a few more homes selling. Um, we're seeing homes sell for a higher average price and we're seeing homes sell faster and for a higher sales to list price ratio, all indicating that the market is really heating up. Um, but here's the trend that I kind of teased at the beginning, the, the, the big thing that is that we're seeing change in our market. So some of these numbers that I just shared with you, in particular, this active pending closed in the last 30 days. I look at those numbers um, every single day and I put them into a little spreadsheet and I put them on a graph. And I want to share my screen with you so that you can see um, so that you can see what I'm talking about. So let me see here. Um, here we are. Okay. Sorry about that. Took me just a second. All right. So if you take a look at this graph, I know it's a little bit busy and a little bit hard to read. I probably should have formatted it better, but I'm not exactly an Excel ninja. Um, but this blue line is how many active listings we had. Now you see, I've been putting this into the graph since the beginning of 2021. Um, so, you know, obviously through 2021 and early 2022, very little inventory. And then right around March or April of 20, um, 2022, that's when interest rates started going really high. And man, all, all of a sudden interest rate, I mean, the total number of active listings skyrocketed, but we've been seeing a pretty steady downward trend. So yeah, a lot of homes came on the market, but then a lot of them, a lot of those sellers decided, okay, if I can't get my pie in the sky price, I'm going to take it off the market. So listings canceled listings sold you know different things like that um and you know and then we saw inventory start to climb towards the end of last year but then it dropped back down again as we kind of hit the holidays um but here's the part that's very very interesting is that it since january the total number of active listings has been increasing and here's why that's interesting usually at this time of year we start to see inventory decrease because of the fact that the demand really picks up, especially in the spring. Um, you, you know, you can really see that by looking at my red line, the pending, the pending line. This is how many pending listings we have at a given time. So if you look at this, look at how much demand has increased. That's how many pending listings there were in January. Okay, we were sitting at roughly 5,000. Now we're sitting at uh, 8,400. So significant more homes going under contract. And we're talking, you know, 30 or 40% more pending listings right now than we had at this um, in January. And that's typical. We, we typically, as we head into the spring, we see uh, a lot more buyers enter the market, a lot more people getting homes under contract. And because of that, in years previous, we saw inventory decline um, through the spring. So if you take a look, this is January of 23. Despite the fact that very few homes were selling, right? Um, on the pendings, we saw the same thing. Uh, even the, 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 the slope of that curve is almost identical. How many listings were going under contract last year compared to how many were going under contract this year. But inventory was decreasing continued to, to decrease all the way until about July, August, inventory decreased. If we go back to 2022, same thing, January of 2022, inventory was decreasing, okay? And then it started to increase. That was a bit of a weird year again because of interest rates. Same thing even in 2021, okay? Inventory was decreasing and then sort of leveled out, um, you know, it started increasing again by May. Um, so what we're seeing right now is, a, is something we haven't seen in, you know, years past, I'm, I'm sure if I went back far enough, it would have happened. But but my point is that right now, homes are coming on the market faster than buyers are buying them, right? And it ultimately is going to come down to supply and demand. I don't know how long this will continue, but if this trend continues for a long period of time, then ultimately you're going to end up having way more supply than, than you have demand, and that will cause downward pressure on prices. Now, if you're a seller, Here's my thoughts. I think the market, again, with how much we're seeing the increase in demand right now, no one's really feeling it, right? The, the homes that are, many of the homes that are coming on the market are still selling for good prices and for, um, you know, record breaking prices and many of them selling, you know, 
rather quickly. Um, you know, average days on market 66 or, or what was it? Yeah, 66. So, um, you know, so many home sellers aren't having too much trouble right now. Yes, inventory is increasing, but it's not skyrocketing and, and demand is increasing with it. So it feels, you know, it feels like it's okay. But what might happen, I guess my prediction is that it come July, when the buyer demand really starts to slow down, maybe even June, buyer demand really starts to slow down around that time, especially in the Phoenix market. No one really wants to get a home under contract in June because that means you're going to be moving in July, right? Unless you have no other option. <laughs> Um, so we typically see our, our biggest months are, are May and June, and by July, it starts to slow down a little bit. So if inventory continues to increase through July, all of a sudden, we're going to get to a point where there's a lot of inventory and suddenly less demand. And I do think that that could cause prices to slip. Um, one other huge factor that we're seeing in our market right now, I'll go ahead and stop my screen share now is new construction. So depending on what kind of home you have, if you're competing against builders, Man, I was out with um, a client this past weekend looking exclusively at new builds. They didn't want to, well, we looked at one resale, but for the most part, they really didn't want to see resales. They only wanted new builds. Um, now, we were in the outskirts of town. I realized that, you know, if you're in, a, you know, kind of a landlocked area where there's not much new construction, you don't have this issue. But if you live in the suburbs, you know, you live in East Mesa or, or Queen Creek, Santan Valley, you know, Maricopa, Buckeye, you know, places where it's surprise, places where we're seeing a lot of new construction still. Um, uh, well, I, I, there's new construction all over the valley, but where you're seeing tons of new construction, these builders are thirsty. And I'm telling you, they are throwing the book at these buyers trying to get them to take action. And that's really tough for many resellers to compete with. You know, we were at Builders uh, this weekend and several of them were offering, hey, we'll give you enough money to cover all your closing costs and buy down your interest rate all the way to a 4.99%. Or, hey, we'll give you you know, $30,000 and you can spend that however you want. If you want to use it towards, towards buying down your rate, you can use that towards buying down your rate, covering your closing costs, upgrades. You know, they were, they were offering really, really good packages. So that's something to be prepared for if you are a seller in these areas is, you know, not only are you competing against the builders in terms of, you know, what they have to offer and what price they're selling for, but keep in mind, whatever their, their advertised price is, they might also be including twenty to $30,000 worth of goodies for the buyer um, at that price. Um, and it's a, a really appealing to a lot of buyers. And that's why we're seeing so many builders, um, so many homes uh, being sold by builders right now, as opposed to resales. I wish I had more data on this. Maybe I'll come prepared on our next one. But I, I think we're seeing, a, of all the homes that are selling, we're seeing a greater percentage. This is my gut feeling. I'll try to come with some actual data. We're seeing a greater percentage of our market right now as new builds than perhaps we've ever seen before. So something to keep an eye on. And um, that is all I have for you today. Hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you'd like to know what's going on with the housing market in your area, please feel free to hit me up. I'm always happy to help. Have a good day.